That's it. Yes, thank you. Okay, welcome back. We are about to have some fun with uh, the anatomy of a blockchain baby. I'm not sure what that is, but you will find out in a second with Galia Bernadzi. Uh, she believes that we're currently in the stage of uh, blockchain adoption where we're going through puberty as a teenager and we're stepping through into the professional world. That's just where we're heading. So I will let her talk about that right now. Welcome, Galia. Hey everyone, good morning. It's that famous early slot, so thanks for being here. Um, I'm Galia, as he mentioned, co-founder of Bancor. Bancor is a standard that allows any token to be convertible for any other token in a network. So I'll start with the hardest question. What is money? Raise your hand if you feel like you know what money is. Some people. So usually the answers to this question are, it's a store of value. It's a unit of account. It's a medium of exchange. And all those things are true, but they're what money does. They're not what money is. What money is, is a tool. It's a tool that we invented to help us collaborate, specifically by sharing value by sharing things of value, knowledge of value, or time of value. So what do you do if you don't have any money? What does a community that doesn't have any money do to allow them to still collaborate? Some communities use barter. We know that barter isn't very efficient, right? It suffers from what we call in economics the double coincidence of wants. In order to barter, I have to have exactly the thing that the person who has exactly the thing that I want, wants. That's the double coincidence of wants, and it makes barter pretty inefficient. It's why we invented money to begin with. So what do you do if you don't have money? Communities do what we've always done since we invented money, which is they make it. I want to show you a quick video of a pilot that we worked on in Kenya with a community just like the one I described that made their own money in order to collaborate. Let's take a look. For a long time, people view African countries that all they need is aid. What they really need is access to trade, to be able to trade more with each other. And so we started Bangla Pesa in Bangladesh, hence the name Bangla Pesa and were able to see this community that had a huge network of small businesses. I was not sleeping at all, because how can you sleep when you are thinking of what you'll eat tomorrow, what a child will eat tomorrow? When Dama introduced Bangla Pesa, it worked better because uh, they came to us as business people, we were doing business within the community, even if we don't have money like in this poor community, we have Bangla Pesa to trade with our goods and services. I go to the shop, I buy maize flour, I buy sugar, they still will come to get water from my well, and not only me alone. We are so many members, now we are in rich community. Five years now, we've been able to set up different community currencies in different parts of Kenya. And most of them are paper-based, and we've been able to have them unique for each community. They still can't really trade with each other. It's very hard to keep community currency up and running and active for a long period of time. And the problem is that they are disconnected from the rest of the financial network. It's like a local network, which is great and useful, but it's disconnected from the internet. If you connect that local network to the internet, it will be a thousand times more useful. So, what does money need to succeed? What does it need to actually work? 
Well, it needs to be accepted by other people, right? Money is a tool for collaboration. It's the ultimate network effect. If no one will accept it, it's not really money. If someone will accept it, it immediately becomes money between those members. So the value of money is in its liquidity. That's the word that we use to describe how easy it is to turn the money that you have into the thing that you want, whether that's food or services, whether that's another kind of money that you need in a different part of the world that you're doing business in. So the value of your money is its liquidity. And today, liquidity for currencies comes from trade volume. Why? Because we match buyers and sellers in order to convert currencies. If I have currency A and I want currency B, I still need to find someone who has currency B and wants currency A. We essentially still barter between our currencies. There is no money for money. The Bancorp protocol aims to separate liquidity from volume so that new and custom currencies like the Bangla Pesa can achieve liquidity in today's global market, can be convertible for other currencies, even though they don't have global demand. So why do we care about this? Why do we want to solve for separating liquidity from volume? Well, in today's markets and in today's paradigm, we're caught in a chicken and egg game, where in order to have value, your currency needs liquidity. To have liquidity, you need volume. To have volume, you need liquidity. And so only the highest volume currencies have value. These are the dollars and the euros of the world. These are the bitcoins and the ethers of the crypto world. But currencies like Bangla Pesa cannot achieve liquidity in this buyer and seller matching paradigm because there's simply not enough volume of buyers and sellers to create that liquidity. But what if we could do it differently? And this was the question that we asked at Bancor. And this was how the Bancor protocol was born. What if we didn't need to match buyers and sellers in order to convert currency A for currency B? And we came up with a method which is a balancing mechanism that lets any token you have be converted for any token you want within a network without needing to find someone to trade with. I'll get into this in a moment, but the basic idea is that we balance the inventory of a currency, the supply of that currency, with the demand for that currency, the requests that are being made to transact in it. And let me explain it a bit more. So how does it work? You can think of the Bancor network like a vending machine. Only instead of snacks, it's full of tokens. And you can use any token that's in the vending machine to buy any token that's in the vending machine. And it will always display the real-time price of the conversion that you're trying to achieve, the token A for token B. How do I do it? The mechanism we call a relay token holds both A and B. And now bear with me as we get a little bit technical for the next couple of slides, just to give you that inside look at how it works. So this relay token knows only one thing, that A equals B. Whatever I've got in A equals whatever I've got in B. So let's say I've got 10 A tokens and 10 B tokens. My relay knows there's 10 and 10, so it knows that 1A equals 1B. If I want to buy an A, I can pay for it with a B, and if I want to buy a B, I can pay for it with an A. So what happens when I do change token A for token B? Here's how it works. I deposit 1A into the relay. Now there are 11 As. I get 1B, because 1A equaled 1B. Now there are 9 Bs. The next person that approaches the vending machine and wants to buy an A for a B will see that 11 As equal 9 Bs, meaning that 1A token no longer buys me 1B token that 1A now buys 0.81 of a B, or vice versa. One B token no longer buys me just one A token. It buys me 1.22 A tokens. 
Basically, what's happened here is that the token that's being sold, its price went down. And the token that's being bought, its price went up. And the vending machine is constantly calculating the price of any token for any token based on the conversions that are being requested from the machine. So the way that you allow this vending machine to have a scalable, literally infinite number of tokens inside is by creating a hub network architecture, meaning a hub and spoke model where there is one token in the center. In our case, that's BNT, the Bancor network token. And so remember those relays I just described? Everyone who wants to upload their token into the vending machine or integrate their token into the Bancor network creates a relay like the one that you saw with their token and B and T. So that's their A and B. If A and B and T are matched, and B or C and B and T are matched, and D and B and T are matched, what that means is that every token is matched to every other token via B and T with only one conversion needed. This model ensures the liquidity of any token to any token or any digital asset, for that matter, regardless of trade volume. You don't need buyers and sellers to be matched in order for tokens to be converted. The vending machine allows for asynchronous and automated conversion between any token in the network. So how does a blockchain baby grow? One use case at a time. And for Bancor, that started with Ethereum. We were born on the Ethereum blockchain. And within the first year of the Bancor network's life, we saw over 100 Ethereum-based tokens integrate with the Bancor protocol, upload their token into that vending machine that you saw. And next, we added support for the EOS blockchain. And over the last six months, we've seen dozens of US-based currencies upload into the Bancor network. So what comes next? Another blockchain with its token ecosystem, allowing those tokens to also achieve liquidity without reliance on trade volume. So to date, there are two blockchains compatible with the Bancor network. There are over 150 tokens now in the system resulting in over 10,000 pairs, possible pairs between these tokens, and counting. So what's next? Liquidity as a service. The ability for one token to be converted into another token is the birthright of a new currency. It's what enables freedom of currency. It's what enables new currencies to be made and to exist at all. We're seeing that applications like wallets and marketplaces, games, and other end user apps are using liquidity in the back end to allow tokens to be converted without the projects themselves needing to pay listing fees to exchanges, do business deals with other token projects to make their tokens compatible. And there are so many use cases on the horizon that we can't even predict. So what does decentralized, scalable liquidity actually mean? It means that any community or project can now have a currency. It means that more people can access more money and do more collaboration. It means that we can create and share more value, which is what this tool called money was invented to help us do in the first place. And communities like Bangladesh are just the first of many. Here you can see a little sample of what they do with the token. They use it to exchange energy and education. They use it to buy goods and services. They use it to provide health care. All of the basic needs that exist within that community and the basic goods and services that they themselves can create and trade. We believe that the future is tokenized. Stay liquid, and thank you.